to show you this stuff right here. Often plants or things that you can consume from the forest look unlikely. It's like eating ants or eating cockroaches. I mean, that looks kind of unlikely for a palate. And this looks unlikely, but it makes an amazing coffee substitute. So I don't know how you will be able to make use of this, other than if you think about what you might use coffee flavoring for. I have no idea what you combine that with, but you'll start thinking about it. Oh, I'm, I'm on it. Far, far up north, you'll find lots of this. I want you to pick one of these leaves right here. Oh my gosh, it smells, it smells very minty. Is it familiar? Yeah. Wintergreen. 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 You know, it triggers a memory of gum. Exactly. Gum. Exactly. Hey, Paul. Yes, sir. Got a couple more down here. One of my favorites of all. Mm. Get it on the front of your mouth, the front of your tongue. Those taste buds there. And then in the back. And you can eat it and swallow it. So have a taste of this. Okay. Mm. Isn't that good? Sorrel. Wood sorrel. Exactly. Yellow wood sorrel. What I should have brought was a pair of scissors. Right? You just want to nip off, just sort of like you're cutting the grass. It's really important to have a balanced flavor profile in almost every single dish that I create. Acid, sweetness, salt, bitterness, all applies. This brings in the acid component. Recognize? Cattail. Cattail. But this is now past the season where we can just pull them up and they're succulent down at the bottom. We've missed that stage. But what I really want to show you is right here. See that? Flour. We can add it to flour. I don't believe it can use it just on its own. It's more like a flour additive. I want you to basically go along and gather these guys. 